got those in there. Hmm. Oh, R9. Over by the oscillator. There it is. I got it. <laughs> Boy. Yeah, I'll fix that. I'll make a I'll make a R9 is right here. Sometimes it's taking us longer to find the part than it is to actually deal with it. Okay, so next on the list is a um 22K. So 22K on the the bill of materials says it's R12. And I stumbled across that one looking for R9. So here's R12 is 10, 9, 11, 12. I thought it was right in there. R12, huh? I think if I, I think we've got a, twelve is already installed somewhere. Oh, right there, right next to it, right next to eleven, hidden by the shadow of the socket. Okay, so that's we're starting to come down to the wire here. What do we got here? These are two. 47K, so 47K is 11, 15, and R3 for speed. 11, 15. Well, we just saw 11. Okay. 11 was right next to 12. So here's 11. And R for speed. And here's the speed pot up here. This is the one of the resistor limit setting for the speed pot. Okay. We got enough of them on there to do some soldering. Clean the tip, add a little bit of solder for transfer, and solder away. Now I'm semi concentrating, I'm not trying to tell any jokes or anything like that. I've already caught a couple of mistakes that I've made stuffing parts, so I'll continue to be concentrating on this job. Is that all of them? Looks like it. Okay, we'll cut them off. Okay, looks good. Okay, so now we're at, uh, we got a, a 100K. Looking at the bill of materials, 100K is at R7 and R10. Well, we passed an R10 a minute ago. Right down there, R10. The general vicinity of R11 and R12. So here goes R10. Okay, 
And with a, what's this one here? This is a brown, black, brown. So that's 100 ohms. I think that was redundant. 100 ohms. Uh, 1, 2, uh, 14, 16, and 17. 14, 16, 17. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna set that on one end and I'm gonna continue with these guys. These are one mega ohm. Okay, one mega ohm, and they go to R4 and R5. Now R5 is not used because we have a volume pot. So you don't put a one mega ohm resistor in R5 because it goes around to the volume pot, but but at R Four, we need a one mag. That's the feedback uh, amplification in the op amp. Okay, and I think that's all of our resistors. Let's solder those in. Clean little. Okay, it's one down here. Okay. So, we got two excess resistors, the junk bin, so all the all those are gone. And down here we've got um, we've got some capacitors down here. We've got a 3.3 um, microfarad capacitor, and that's at C9. And we can spot that pretty quick. And what we got? The long lead is the short lead is negative, so the long lead is positive. Okay, uh, we got a 47 microfarad short, which is at um, C30. And same thing, long, long lead is positive. Uh, we got a 47K, I mean a 47 microfarad. Okay, 47 microfarad, double check that, yep, okay. And that's going to be at, at um, 47 microfarads at C7 and C22. So here's C22, positive, negative. C22. And what did you say the other one was? C7 and C22 is C7 over here. Um, okay. We're going to Solder them in. Clean. Dab. Solder. Okay, cut those leads off. We're running out of parts.
So that leaves me with the with the refractor diode and an LED, but that LED is wrong. So we're going to this was an, I picked out an early pack. Okay, so this is this refractor diode is obviously something that's in every every rock mite, but in this case, I like to put that in a socket or not. Um, I never really had to change one, so I guess we'll solder that one in. So I'll go in right here. It doesn't change from band to band. It's always the same. So we'll solder that one up. Only because I want a clean rack up there. Okay. So, looking down at the board, I'm looking for parts that don't look like they have. Um, there's a D4, but that changes. Um, well, it changes, but it doesn't. But we won't go into that right at the moment. So we got transistors, we got uh, controls, more transistors, another transistor. We got this D3. Uh, we got an R5. Oh, that was, that was the, uh, the volume pot. Another. So, we've got all the discretes except for the transistors, and they're located in the semiconductor bag. And there are the transistors. I'm going to set, I'm going to set the uh, 3866 aside. So, these two transistors are um, 4401s and they go to Q4, Q5. So Q4, Q5. So here's Q4, Q5. I do not set them all the way down. I leave about a quarter of an inch in case I ever have to cut them out and replace them. You want a little bit of leads to do that, so these are kind of squashed together. D4 and D5. Oh, Q4 and Q5. Here's Q4. Come on. Okay. Uh, and then we've got these two in seven thousands. We'll cut those off. Three of them. Two in seven thousand is at, just to be sure, they're at Q1, 2, and 3. I should remember those numbers pretty easy. Q1, Q2, and Q3. Here's Q2. Now that one went down a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna push it back up before I spread the legs so it got a little bit more height to it. So it's Q2. So now we got one and three. And here's three right here. So we got what Q1 left, and we've got one one spot right here. a little bit too wide. There, that's much better. Okay, let's solder those transistors in.
Four, and here's the fifth transistor. Okay, five transistors. Five! I love to count transistors. Okay, I remember that from my daughter. One of my favorite Sesame Street characters, the count. As a kidder, you count a lot. I've counted to 12 at least a million times, I think. And one last one up here. Because there's 12, tin, uh, 12 cupcakes in a cupcake tin, and that's how I kit my kits with you know 12 kits at a time and cupcake tins and plastic cups. And I have to count to 12 when I'm keeping track of parts. Okay. That is pretty much all the discretes from the discrete bag or the common bag. Now what we have is stuff for this, that's band specific. And band specific is typically was on the um, uh, on the two band modules, but